Although Kareem Abdul-Jabbar played back in the 70s and 80s, every single NBA fan has heard of him. And we've all seen his hook shot too. It was his go-to weapon on the offensive end and helped him reach the most points all time in the NBA. And it also helped him achieve all of these accolades that you can see here. I mean, that is probably one of the best resumes of all NBA players ever. But modern NBA fans will know that the sky hook is rarely used in today's NBA. And no player has ever consistently used it like Kareem or done it anywhere near as well as he did. And I wondered, why has no one replicated the most unstoppable shot ever in NBA history? And well, there's a few reasons why. First of all, the league is in a far different position now to what it was in the 70s and 80s. The three-point line wasn't introduced until 1979, so players had no reason to shoot that far out. And then even throughout the 80s, teams rarely shot threes, with the most being 6.6 .6 game in 1989. Whereas now, threes are being shot at an all-time high, with 34 being attempted a game. It is very rare in today's game that you see a centre play like a true centre, as they've had to adjust their game. Joel Embiid, a player who would have dominated 30 or 40 years ago, has had to expand his game to the three-point line as it makes him such a better player. In today's league, almost every player needs to be able to shoot, and if you can't, your value drops significantly. But when you have no three-point line, there's no reason to shoot from that far out, and you're far more likely to make shots closer to the basket. Another reason though is a rule that NBA used to have about double teaming on defence. Essentially, you had to guard your man tightly and could not double team or else you would be called for a technical foul for illegal defense. Just watch this here and you'll see exactly what I mean. Now clear out, shot clock seven. Isaiah with great control on the dribble. Here is the gun and it goes. He owns John Stockton tonight. Let's jump. And this rule was in place for all of Kareem's career, and it made it much easier for him to score at the basket, as he would never be double teamed. When players post up today, it's not unusual to see them double teamed and then forced to kick the ball out, as it is a much better option than going up for a contested layup. This doesn't take anything away from Kareem, but he wouldn't be able to play like he did in today's NBA. But yet, there is still an even more important reason as to why no one has recreated the skyhook, and it's something I doubt a lot of people here will know. When Kareem was still in college, he was known as Lou Alcindor, he played for UCLA and he was extremely dominant. He averaged 26.4 points per game while he was there, but for his first season, his go-to move wasn't the skyhook, he would just dunk it. He played much like Wilt Chamberlain, and after the NCAA had years of Wilt Chamberlain just dominating everyone with how tall, fast and athletic he was, they thought it was time for a change. So after his first season in the league, they just banned dunking as they said it was an unfair advantage for taller players. By banning dunking, they thought it would take away the advantage of being tall and create a much more level playing field for shorter players to be able to play in their league. And this ban actually lasted for 9 years which is far longer than I thought it would have lasted. The NCAA did also say that they prevented dunking as it caused a lot of injuries, but we know this isn't true. It was just to prevent Kareem from being as dominant as Wilt was. And so Kareem had to find a way to adapt to this change and it led to him shooting the skyhook. What I initially thought though, is why didn't Kareem just go up for a dunk like he would usually do, but then instead of throwing it down, just lightly put it in. But this would also have counted as a dunk, as the ball would still be travelling downwards when he released it. So after Kareem had two full years of shooting skyhooks instead of dunks, he'd perfected his skyhook pretty well, so it made sense to carry on doing it. And it's quite interesting to think whether this ban on dunking actually made Kareem a better player in the long run. And I do, to be honest, as it made him develop his offensive game to more than just dunks and layups. With Kareem's skyhook too, he did it a little bit better than everyone else did, and this is down to practice and his technique. He shoots the ball further away from the basket than most, and the most significant difference is how extended his arm is when he releases the ball, as Kareem routinely released the ball about 10.5 feet off the ground. This allowed him to shoot the ball with a flatter arch, but still giving it a large angle of entry into the basket. This concept is hard to explain, but trust me, it does make sense. Essentially, just the higher up you release the ball, the flatter the angle of the release can be. So with current NBA players not having to go for a ban of dunking like Kareem did, they've never had to adapt their game. So yeah, there is a lot more reason for centers not shooting skyhooks than what you may have thought, but even with the reasons I've mentioned, it still wouldn't hurt for a player to learn the skyhook, as a lot of centers do still use the hook shot, but just not as well as Kareem does. I personally think a guy like Joel Embiid would benefit greatly with a skyhook, as he can play like a traditional centre when he wants to. And I know NBA teams have hired Kareem to work with them before, so I wouldn't be surprised if the Sixers hired Kareem just to work with Embiid. 
So anyway, that's everything for this video, and as always, I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you want to see more from me, obviously you can subscribe and like my videos, it really helps me out too. And then as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.